Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go, people. Here we go. 1973 Bowie pinups. Where does Clark the Shark even begin here? Um, look at this mad cat. <laughs> He's got Twiggy. <laughs> Bowie with Twiggy on the cover. Um, now, if there was ever an album that Clark the Shark grew up with, it was this one right here. Uh, October 73. Um, I guess I was in third grade at Parkway School when this thing came out. And um, I remember, <laughs> I remember seeing this album around the house at 251 Paseo de Gracia. Uh, along with, you know, Brian Ferry and Genesis and Peter Gabriel albums over the years. All kinds of good shit at 251, baby. Uh, my brother Paul was listening to all the good stuff. And, um, but not many albums better than this one, you guys. This album is incredible. Well, mainly just because how I remember it growing up in the South Bay, Redondo Beach, Torrance, Palos Verdes, Hermosa Beach, and David Bowie. So many people around my community loved these albums. Uh, you know, Ziggy Stardust, amazing. But uh, going backwards to the beginning of Bowie, it's just a really uh, inter interesting collection of music right here on the Clark the Shark Show. At 1-800-449-8255 from the fabulous golden EIB Sharkraphone. It's not a microphone because when I'm talking about David Bowie pinups, I'm talking about an album. And even though it is of all covers, um, it's almost like this to me, Clark the Shark. I don't know why, but you know, uh, kind of like in the same way, I think the Who Live at Leeds is uh, like a studio album. I think of Pinups as an all original Bowie album because he takes all these cover songs and he brilliantly makes them into his own songs here, people. It's really wild. And uh, I don't even care what the stars are of this. You know, Clark the Shark, my opinion is set in cement. I love this album. 1973, coming on the heels of Aladdin Sane. What an album that is. Also from 73. Almost seems like this album is before Aladdin Sane, but it isn't. Uh, of course, the next album would be Diamond Dogs, which is fucking killer. That's really the beginning of the new Bowie, uh, that album right there, you guys. And uh, 1 800 449 Clark the Shark. Ooh, there's Twiggy. Remember her and the Blues Brothers when uh, she meets up with Jake? <laughs> at the gas station and he, he siphons her gas. I mean, and then uh, the weird little sidebar, Twiggy goes to like the motel to meet up with Jake and, and Jake never even knew. <laughs> and then of course, like, uh, you know, Elwood. <laughs> I'm not even sure which is which. Jake and Elwood. Um, you know, Belushi's character has uh, Carrie Fisher after him. <laughs> and he's like, who is that girl? You know, she's like trying to machine gun him. And look at the Blues Brothers just breaking hearts, you know. Who's this? Who? Oh, it's Brian Ferry. Dude, if my camera would just fucking focus. <laughs> And, uh, 
dude, I don't know what uh, they're going to give it. What the hell is this? All music gives it a three. The Encyclopedia of Pop Music. Dude, what the f... Who's giving this a three? The Encyclopedia of Pop. <laughs> Rolling Stone Album Guide. Well, that'll probably give it something good, but... <laughs> what? The fuck? Dude. What the fuck do they know? This album is killer. It gets a three, a B minus, a three. Dude, somebody give it a two out of five? Select, who the fuck are they? Well, I don't, dude, I don't know what's wrong with those stars. They must not listen to this album because um, just the killer version of Rosalind <laughs> by the pretty things. I mean... Who's given that a two out of five? And then here comes the night by them, you know, Van Morrison. Dude, this is killer. These sound like David Bowie songs the way he does them. It's insane. And of course, I Wish You Would by the Yardbirds is killer the way Bowie does it. It's awesome. And then See Emily Play by uh, the Sid Barrett era Pink Floyd is just amazing you know the, uh, he's batting a thousand he's four for four uh everything's all right the mojos that's killer you guys this album is beyond killer this album's a uh a 10 out of 10 not a nine out of 10 i don't know who given this a two out of five or whatever but can't explain by the who his version is killer you guys side one he bats a thousand on pinups I mean, come on, you guys. Cover songs, but David Bowie turns them into David Bowie songs. And um, Friday on My Mind is probably my favorite song on this, you guys. Um, the Easy Beats. Oh, killer. But no, I take it back. Track two on side two, Sorrow by The Mercies. Amazing. So killer. Fuck. Bowie's version. With your long blonde hair. Oh, don't listen to the critics, you guys. They don't know what they're talking about, about this Bowie album. And don't bring me down. The pretty things. Once again, awesome. And shapes of things. The Yardbirds. I like Bowie's version more than Jeff Beck and Rod Stewart's version. You guys, the Jeff Beck group. And that's saying a lot. Anyway, anyhow, anywhere, The Who, Bowie's version is killer, you guys. If there's one song that might be kind of weak on this album, and it's not that weak, you guys, it's Where Have All the Good Times Gone? Me, Clark the Shark, I like the Van Halen version more than uh, either Bowie or the Kinks. But, you know, dude, that will always be a Kinks classic. Come on. But Bowie does it really fucking good. Where have all the good times gone? And um, I can't believe the low. I didn't know that the critics gave this low reviews. They don't know what they're talking about here, you guys. I apologize for these critics because they don't, uh, you know, my camera is not in focus tonight. But, um, you know. Oh, dude, Twiggy. And uh, there's that dude, Ken Scott. But um, anyway, you guys, I got to get this camera in focus. It's I don't know why. I was in the shower earlier, and I think it made the uh, viewfinder all blurry. <laughs> but pinups, David Bowie, what an album, you guys. On a scale of 1 to 10, this is one of the greatest all-covers albums ever recorded. Don't listen to those critics because me and my brother Paul, oh, dude, Paulie loved this album. People all over the South Bay, Torrance and Redondo, back in the 70s and on through the 80s into today, we loved this album, you guys, Bowie, Pinups. We love Twiggy, too, man. 
I mean, I love this album just because Twiggy is on the cover. <laughs> Look at this madman. Who invented punk rock? Was it this guy? I mean, some say it was Iggy Pop. I don't know. Some say it was the Standells or maybe the Who. But uh, MC5, I don't know. I think, you know, maybe it was the Kinks, you guys, if you want the truth. But Bowie, definitely. Uh, definitely, definitely, definitely may have invented New Wave, if not punk. And this album, Pinups, I would say is the beginning of that, but maybe not. Maybe on Hunky Dory, 1971. Um, dude, I got to get this camera to focus or this video. But um, hard to say who invented New Wave or punk. Uh because, you know, those are just labels that the media gives things. But, um, you know, was it the MC5? Was it Bowie? Was it Iggy Pop? Was it The Who? Was it Frank Zappa? Was it Lou Reed? I really don't care, you guys. All I know is David Bowie pinups encapsulates. Uh, whatever that word, encapsulates? <laughs> It it gathers everything together on this album. Hey, maybe Sid Barrett invented punk, you guys. Wrap your psyche around that one, maybe. But uh, David Bowie definitely invented the weirdo. No doubt, you guys. I'd say he was ahead of his time, but no. Uh, he was the times way back then. And this album, Pinups, uh, it was the album where uh, it solidified that early David Bowie thing. It uh, laid it in cement. I mean, Hunky Dory was incredible. The Man Who Sold the World, of course, before. And uh, that second Bowie album with Space Oddity is really good. Oh, there it goes. Now it's focused. But, um, well, there it goes out again. But then when he gets into like Aladdin Sane and pinups, to me, those are the golden years for Bowie. No pun. Uh, to me, Clark the Shark. Diamond Dogs, he's moving into a new phase. That's almost the start of like station to station and low and then Young Americans is like an anomaly. It's almost like he went off and got on a sidetrack and did this soul R&B thing that he never really like went back to a little bit on station to station. But, uh, you know, maybe a little bit on low, but um, he never really did an album like Young Americans before it or after it. And I can definitely say that about 1973 David Bowie, Pinups. What an album, you guys. What an amazing album. Check out, uh, especially, uh, I guess, See Emily Play. Uh, that's killer. And Shapes of Things. That's killer. And Rosalind, oh, that's so killer. What an album, you guys. Incredible. Now, these critics who give this album bad reviews, it only shows you guys how little the critics who claim they know rock and roll so much, it shows you how little they know when they're given uh, Bowie a two out of five. Okay, you guys? Clearly, they they either don't know what they're talking about or they don't care enough to investigate. But come on, dude, any fool knows this is one of the best David Bowie albums right here. And it's funny. It's almost like you guys need Clark the Shark to point out to you guys what the stupid ass critics cannot. Uh, the critics get things so wrong about so many albums, you guys. 
and you need Clark the Shark to come along and square the deal and settle the score and, you know, get it in focus, unlike my camera tonight. But don't worry, you guys, me, Clark the Shark, I will be there for you and I'll be there for Bowie too right here on the Clark the Shark Show, 1-800-449-8255 from the fabulous golden EIB Sharkerphone. It's not a microphone. It's a golden EIB Sharkerphone, the excellence in shark casting network where you just got the word, the truth, the testimony, the gospel, and really the only accurate review and let's be honest, you guys, the only review, period, that you will ever want or you will ever need of this incredible, atmospheric, melodic, hard-hitting, hard-rocking album of all cover songs. It's a tribute album paying homage, if you will, to artists that David Bowie loved. But in reality, this becomes an all original David Bowie album. I'm not kidding you guys. He makes these songs. He turns these songs into his own on this incredible journey of an album. And I want you guys to go buy this, especially if you're only 18 or you know, you're 20 right now and you were born in 2003, two years after 9-11, I want you to go buy Bowie pinups uh, because it's gonna make you smarter to listen to this album. Uh, and you believe me, you guys, when you listen to Taylor Swift and today's music, you know, the Jonas Brothers or any of that fucking crap, those only make you dumber and more uh, like, I don't know, idiotic and a person who does what they're told. Dude, don't fucking do what you're told. You do what Clark the Shark tells you and you do that only at 1-800-449-8255. And I'm telling you right now to go and buy some Bowie pinups and don't listen to the critics. As a matter of fact, I want you to write a letter to all those critics below. I want you to come to the Wikipedia page of Bowie pinups and I want you to write letters and emails to all those critics that gave this album a bad review and you tell them, you guys don't know what the fuck you're talking about because Clark the Shark says this album is good. So it's either Clark the Shark's opinion or your opinion. And you're going to be like, I'm going with Clark the Shark, not you at 1-800-449-8255. That's right. shark a doodle do bidding you adieu. Buy this Bowie album, you guys. It's amazing. Don't listen to fucking critics, especially at All Music and Rolling Stone. They don't know shit. And I'm out of here, people. Peace.